there are over 5 million podcasts out there right now. And you might wonder, with that many, how can I make my podcast stand out? Well, I've got more good news. Over 460 million people listen to podcasts every day, and nearly half of the 5 million podcasts only have three episodes. So if we divide the total number of listeners by the number of podcasts that are actively posting, your podcast could attract a significant audience. But how do you attract those listeners? Well, if you're asking those questions, then you are in the right place. Because today, I'm going to cover what you need in order to create a good podcast. And I'm going to break it down into three categories. The essentials, optional equipment, and what I use. And stick around to the end because I'm going to explain how you can make your podcast explode this year. Let's start with essentials. Podcasting is easier than ever. All you need is a microphone, and even your phone has a microphone. Now, I wouldn't actually recommend podcasting from your phone, but it is possible. Here, I'll show you how to use an app in order to record. I recommend Ferrite. It's pretty cheap, and uh, it works really well. Basically, you're going to hit record, and then you're going to hold your phone upside down and talk into it. Be consistent in how you hold your phone and ensure that your breath doesn't go into the phone as that's going to make it sound bad. I recorded all of that using my phone. It didn't sound amazing, but, you know, it wasn't terrible either. If you want better sound quality, I recommend getting a built-for-purpose microphone. I'll post links to everything that I mentioned down below. There are going to be different styles of microphones available to you. There's lav mics, which clip to your shirt, shotgun mics so that you boom out of frame, and my go-to, broadcast microphones, specifically dynamic microphones. When you're shopping for a dynamic mic, you want to decide how many people are going to be on your show with you in person. If your podcast is remote, then things get a whole lot easier and you can use USB mics. However, if you have multiple people in a room together, things can get complicated, but we'll discuss that later. If you're alone in a room, either on a solo podcast or a podcast done remotely, a USB mic is going to be fine. They've improved a lot over the years. My recommendation for a good USB mic is either the Shure MV7, which is $249, or the Rode PodMic USB, which is $199. Both microphones have both USB and XLR, which we will talk about later, so you can use them with different settings. They also have a headphone input on the back, so if you've ever wondered why video podcasters tend to wear headphones when they're talking to people in the same room, it's so that they can hear how they sound. This is called monitoring. To start a podcast with a friend, you're each going to want to invest about $200 if you want to go with the Rode pod mics. Then do the show remotely. For remote podcasting, I use Riverside.fm. It's absolutely amazing. You send a link to your guest, they show up, you record, it edits everything for you at a super high quality. It's very highly recommended and I use it all the time. Link down below. Besides microphones, you're also going to need headphones. If you already have headphones, you can skip this part, but I've been using the Audio-Technica ATH-M50X for years. I'm a big fan, but the included ear cups are a little bit uncomfortable. So I recommend if you do go with these, then you should get replacement cushions from Wicked Cushions. Another option I'm considering are the Rode NTH100s. I've heard really good things about them, but for now, my recommendation has to be stick with the Audio Technica set. Doing a show remotely is fine. My podcast is a remote show, but there is something to be said about being in a room with your guests. The conversation will have a tendency to flow better, it'll feel more natural, and you don't have that slight delay that we've all experienced during Zoom calls where everybody starts talking over each other. If you want to level up your podcast and record in the same room with your co-hosts, these mics will still be useful thanks to the fact that they have the option of using XLR. Having more than one USB mic on a computer can cause problems. When you are ready for in-person podcasting, it's time to get an audio interface. An audio interface uses XLR cables to allow you to hook multiple microphones up at once. You can get something like the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, which is very popular. This allows you to use two XLR microphones and two pair of headphones and you can record it on your computer. It works great. 
but personally, I would level that up to the Rodecaster Duo. This has two XLR inputs and two sets of headphones, just like the 2i2, but it also has these smart pads and really nice faders for controlling your audio. The smart pads let you add music live while you're doing your show. You can hit the intro button, fade it out, start your show, and then at the end of the show, hit the outro button, fade it back in, all with the faders. And what's even better, no computer is needed. And because you were adding music during the show and everybody could hear the music during the show and all the sound effects, there's no need for you to edit when you're done. Plus, you can record it directly to an SD card right in the mixer so you don't even need a computer for this setup. I personally use the big brother to this. It's called the Rodecaster Pro 2. It comes in at about $700. It's similar but bigger with more XLR inputs and more headphone jacks. If I were starting today, I would get the Duo unless I was doing a show with more than two people in the room. Next, let's discuss lights. You might be wondering why would I be recommending lights for your audio-only podcast? You don't need lights, and an audio-only podcasts are great. But remember at the beginning when I mentioned the secret to making your podcast explode this year? It's video. Video podcasts have a huge advantage over audio-only podcasts because of YouTube. YouTube has 2.7 billion monthly active users, and it offers the discoverability that audio podcasts just don't have. If you're going to record a podcast, you may as well turn on a camera and make a video version for YouTube at the same time. Yes, it will complicate your workflow, but you are going to be glad that you did. For example, my current podcast gets roughly 3,000 to 6,000 downloads per episode, but the YouTube version of the podcast gets around 20,000 views per episode. And in only 38 episodes, the show has more than 600,000 views on YouTube. Podcasts are huge on YouTube, and if you're not using video, you are missing out on a huge section of the audience that wants to watch your show. Let's talk about that lighting. I record my podcast in a very small 12 by 12 foot room with slanted ceilings. It's in my attic. So I don't have room for the lights that I would prefer. If I were in another room, I would probably go with the Godox SL 60 watt light for $140 and the SBUI softbox for $75. I bought these and I loved how they looked, but they were just too big for this particular room. If you're in a smaller space like me, I would recommend getting LED panels. You can get away with just having one, but I use the newer 18 inch LED video panel. It's $270, but it comes with two. So you can use one for your key light and the other for your rim light. You can also control them with a remote. As for a camera, with good lighting, you can get away with just using a webcam, or you can get a used DSLR if you are on a budget. I shot my show for years on an old Logitech webcam and nobody complained. If I were buying a webcam today, I'd probably go with the Elgato face cam for about 150 bucks. The next step up for that is the OBSBOT TinyCam 2, which has some pretty impressive tracking features for just $300. Okay, I listed off a bunch of options, but what do I actually use? Here we go. This stuff is expensive, so get your wallets ready. My microphone is the Heil PR40, which costs about $350. You can get one with a shock mount and a boom arm for about $430. I use the Rode PSA1 Plus boom arm because my old boom arm broke after using it for years. It's an XLR mic, and it goes into the Rodecaster Pro 2, which is about $700. It has four XLR inputs, four headphone jacks, and some of the best preamps that you can get. This thing is incredibly good, and I personally hardly scratch the surface of what it can do. Next up is the camera. I'm shooting this on the Sony a6700, which is total overkill for what I do, but I wanted something that was future-proof. The lenses that I use are the Sigma 16mm f1.4 for talking head stuff, but lately I've been leaning on my Tamron 17-70mm to lens that has an aperture of f2.8. I run the camera into my capture card with Elgato HD60X. You can plug this camera directly into the computer, but I already had the capture card, so I figured why not use it. The Rodecaster and the capture card go into my CalDigit TS4 Thunderbolt dock so I can have a single wire go from my MacBook Pro 
and hook everything up that way. This setup is pretty much future-proof, meaning no matter what I'm going to throw at it, it's gonna get handled. But a lot of people won't do any in-person podcasting. And for them, the Rodecaster Duo that I mentioned earlier and the Rodecaster Pro 2 that I am using, they're gonna be mostly unused features. So for those people, I would recommend the same mic, the same camera, the same lenses, the same lights, and ditch the capture card and the mixer and instead get the Streamer X from Rode. It handles all of your video and audio because it has the same preamps that I'm using right now and a built-in capture card. Then you just hit hop on Riverside and record. This gear is pretty top of the line, but gear does not make a show great. What makes a great show is lots and lots of bad shows. And if you wanna know what I mean by that, then check out this video right here. Thanks for watching.